Hi folks, I'm gonna to try to keep this video under five minutes. I have a lot to say, so I'll just try to squeeze it all in. This video is about these uh, plastic inserts for the harpoon and why do they break sometimes? Now here's the thing, I wanted a broken one. So I sat there and beat on it with a hammer and shot it all over the shop. Then I put this piece of lead on it and started beating on it. That's the indention made into the plastic and that's the flat spot where I tried to beat this thing and make it crack. It didn't, these things are very, very strong but they don't stand up to 5,000 PSI and a lead pellet going sideways and breaking into it. So I'll get right into it. Um, this barrel right here, I'm gonna do my best to show you this. I think if you look real close, you can see that the rifling goes right up to the very end, okay? This one, I've run a 457 reamer into it. You may be able to tell that the rifling doesn't go up to the end. I need something shiny at the other end to kind of show you. But here in a second, I'll be able to prove it. So here is a 457 Undream. This is a stock AEA barrel 45 cal. I cannot press a pellet into it. As hard as I press, I can't get that pellet to go inside. And the reason is the rifling goes right up to the, to the end. So this one has been reamed. I put a 457 reamer into it, and now the pellet goes right in. It's a chamber area. Without a chamber area, if you're sitting there trying to basically take air pressure seated inside a little plastic piece, this basically ends up being the chamber, a little plastic chamber instead, but still the chamber. So it's inside the chamber. The chamber is up against this barrel. The barrel is ever so slightly smaller because of the rifling and you're trying to push a pellet up inside it. Now to give you some idea of what happens when that occurs, I have uh, taken two pieces of aluminum and I cut the exact same size hole, 14 millimeter. Just chopped it off, 14 millimeter hole. This one, I took a hammer and beat this down into it because it would not fit in a 14 millimeter hole. Tooling leaves jagged marks, that sort of thing. Now look very, very close and you'll see what happens. This is wood dust, but I'm beginning to move away with my hands. And look at the splinter, splintering that occurs right there as this wood was being forced into the hole. This wood is a lot stronger than lead. Same basic things happening. If you try to take a lead pellet that's physically larger than a barrel and shove it into a hole that's slightly smaller, that same thing is occurring. It's shredding the aluminum around the edges. It's creating lead dust. All the stuff eventually goes out the barrel. But every now and then, my guess is one of these pellets gets a little cockeyed, doesn't go through, and that 4,500 PSI or 4,500 PSI or 5,000 PSI has to go somewhere. And what it does is it shatters the inserts. Now, again, I tried to break one of these. Now, I can break it. Trust me, I can do something that'll break this. But normal things like hitting it with a hammer and then beating something down into the center of it would not break it. So it's very, very strong. The only reason my inserts are working so well is they're made of steel so basically instead of having a chamber inside the barrel you have a chamber outside the barrel and if you adjust the barrel right where the barrel is right up against that because you do have adjustment on these that's that threading right there you've got about three sixteenths of an inch adjustment these are setting lined up end to end this is the chamber and it transfers right into the barrel without doing all of those very very bad things so here's what I'm going to do. Um, on something like these 50 cal barrels, uh, the 50 cal that came in recently for the Magnum, I've been cutting these down. This one just gets uh, crowned and it's going to get re-blued. On these ones that I chamber, I make sure that my chamber, uh, 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 creating this end of it, I make sure that the chamber has already been uh, uh, honed out to about three quarters of an inch. I don't have that issue. If I have sold you a harpoon with these AEA barrels that don't have a chamber, you're welcome to return those to me. I will create this chamber and send it back to you at no charge. Um, it'd be a real good idea to do that. Whether you're using the plastic or steel ones, having that small chamber right there will be real good. If you didn't buy from me and you're a good customer and you've been buying stuff from me, I'll still take care of it. If I don't know you, <laughs> you've never bought anything from me and supported me, but you'd like me to do this, contact me, we'll figure something out. But uh, this is a real good idea because um, if you're just using this piece of plastic as a chamber because the barrel uh, right here has not been chambered and has rifling right up to the end, 
this plastic is not a chamber. And if you've seen videos where these things are shattered and laid in little pieces, that's what happens when 4,500 to 5,000 PSI doesn't have anywhere to go because the pellet's gotten sideways and locked in and that little piece of plastic just explodes. All of that is inside the, uh, the barrel holder with the air plenum up against it. It shouldn't be a matter of danger or anything coming back at you, but still you'll burn right through these over and over again. Probably comes down to whatever pellet's being used. So again, uh, I want to let people know that figured out why it's happening, what's going on. I sat there and looked at these things uh, and it's hit and miss because I have found AEA barrels like this 50 cal that is chambered. For some reason, some of them are chambered, some of them are not. Some of them, they've already created it where a 50 cal round will fit in. There are shorter ones where it won't. There's 45 cals where it won't. So again, if they don't have a chamber, you need to have that chamber made. All it is is running a hone in with a lathe for about 20 seconds, you're done. Uh, or using steel inserts. That's the only way you're going to keep from having this little plastic piece be the chamber and it explode. So again, you're my customer. Happy to take care of you. Uh, just let me know what you have and we'll figure out a plan for getting it back to me so I can hone them. Again, obviously, I didn't make that barrel. AEA made that barrel. But if you're my customer, I'm going to support you. So just let me know. Y'all have a good day. Take care. Bye-bye.